in the summer of 2009, I was looking to maybe buy a like fallen apart condemned house. It was condemned for all sorts of issues, was, was completely torn apart from top to bottom. We spent about five months completely remodeling the place, um, replacing floors, doing all the construction work, getting everything together to get it an actual like, livable space. That November and December started holding events here for the first time. And then in that January, Richmond Food Not Bomb started cooking in the space. Since then, we've just steadily grown, acquired more members, more media attention, uh, and a lot more ideas just by having all of us work together and live together for so long. Find your 10 inch mark to make little lines on either side and then move the T-square down a couple inches. Well, the wing that is a collective and that at any, any given point in time, there's a certain number of us who live here. And living here, we have responsibilities to each other Everything from your standard, like, we have to keep the house clean, to trying to cook each other food, to just spending a lot of time hanging out and taking care of each other's emotional health and those sorts of things. And then we are also involved as a, as a collective that all lives together in a lot of um, different political activities around the city, a lot of anarchist activities, which for us include kind of the more mundane things like doing a neighborhood trash cleanup once a week to the more exciting, like, kind of more interesting events. So we're, we're a collective because we, none of us could do all of the things that the Wingnut does on our own. I grew up about 25 miles from here on 13 acres of land. My parents haven't used that land for a really long time. So um, they basically have let us plant an orchard in a couple of their fields out there. Eventual goal is that we'll be producing enough produce out there that we can make a lot of our funds collectively by like selling whole fruit at farmers markets, by canning food and jellies and jams and selling that and also have excess stuff to bring to distribute for free in our neighborhood as well. I do consider the Wingnut to be a community space. It's open not only to other activists and radicals who want to meet here and hang out here, uh, use the resources that we have available, um, but it's also open, I, I guess, more specifically towards our neighborhood and the people in our immediate community. We have, um, we have our open hours twice a week, so people can come use the space however they might please. We have the, the Radical Lending Library that people can check out books from, internet access, plenty of board games, you know, and just a general place for people to come and, and talk about their concerns with the neighborhood, with the community, and how we might be able to help, and just trying to open our doors a little bit We get a really good response from people in our neighborhood. It's like most, it's a little largely a working class or poor neighborhood, mostly of people of color. But we have a lot of support from our neighbors, um, which is really good. And part of what we want is, is not to just be people who moved here in 2009 and totally steamroll everyone. Um, a lot of people who think that organizing as anarchists is totally totally out there and extreme or something, don't realize that most people, it seems like to me, understand why you would be against the government and understand why you'd be against the police and understand why you'd be against prisons. And I think that a lot of the things that we believe resonate really well with people who are coming from oppressed communities. One of the, well, I mean, one of the major things about anarchism like when, when I talk to neighbors and they ask me well what does it mean that you're anarchist and I tell them you know it means that we don't think there should be a government or hierarchy or bosses or people with control over others um, then they say like well what would you want it to look like and I always answer 
well, I can't decide for you what it should look like because kind of the whole point is, is that groups of people together should be deciding for themselves as like autonomous groups of people um, how they want their lives to be. found out that um, there were plans in the works by like capitalists to renovate the park that we have served food net bombs in for 17 years and kind of one of the few safe green spaces in the city where a lot of like homeless or working poor people are safe to hang out with more limited police harassment than they would anywhere else. And so we sort of like did all the bullshit liberal organizing um, that a lot of other people wanted to do. There was like a petition. There was going to like meetings held by shitty city council people like Charles Samuels and, you know, and being logical and reasonable and explaining why their plan was bad, but not getting them to change their plan because they didn't care about it being bad. They care about gentrifying the park instead of waiting for them to do something fucked up and then being reactionary, we wanted to kind of preemptively take a stand and do more to create publicity, to create dialogue, um, and to make people think about how seriously this issue is taken by a lot of us. And so um, one of the members of the Wingnut came up with the idea of occupying the park. Despite urging from city councilman Charles Samuels to enforce the law, the police gave the protesters every opportunity to move along, pack up their tents and outhouse. Finally, at about 12.30 Thursday morning, they took action against the seven who refused to leave. Those who agreed to go were given time to pack up. So why did it take so long? The mayor wouldn't answer that question. Samuels wasn't sure. It appears this occupation was a new twist for the administration. The police and the city administration, in my mind, bent over backward to accommodate them and to defuse the situation. What these folks had essentially done was a lot less an exercise of free speech and an unlawful occupation of city property. They're giving us the courtesy they don't give most homeless people. Usually when they bust up homeless camps, they throw away everyone's belongings. They don't give anyone a chance to retrieve their sleeping bags or their clothes or anything important to them. And the de facto leader of the occupation, anarchist and St. Catherine's graduate Mo Carnes, has embarrassed the police department before with their Freedom of Information Act revelations and their police scanner monitoring program. Officials know anything they do will be recorded and widely broadcast on the web. Um, when I first heard about it, I was living on the streets at the time. I was just kind of living down by the river and everything. For a while, I was sleeping in my car, and I had to stop doing it after a while because the cops would come by almost every night and just bang on my window at 3 o'clock in the morning and they just sit there and fuck with me for like half an hour because I guess they had nothing better to do at that time of night. And sometimes the cops would be all right. And then a lot of times they would just be some asshole cop and he'd be like, yeah, if you stay out here for the rest of the night, I'm probably gonna come back and find you dead. And they'd like say a lot of fucked up shit that was just kind of veiled threats and everything. And that's kind of why I stopped sleeping in my car and just kind of went down to the river because it was a there was a lot more hiding spots there. I definitely didn't feel safe with the police around. I was 
at a party at a friend's house, and one of my friends, she knew some of the wing nuts, and she told me that uh, some people were occupying the park. So I went and checked it out the next day, and I saw everybody sitting there with uh, tents set up and everything. I was just like, whoa, this is where I need to be. I'd been living down by the river by myself for a while, and I'd been kind of lonely down there and everything, and it was kind of sucking because it was still pretty cold. So I kind of went and got my things, and hiked it all up to the park and set up my tent up there and I just got to know everybody there. It was a really nice thing because uh, they had kind of built a community inside the park for all of the homeless people in Richmond and people would just come by and we, we'd go out and try to gather up food and everything so anybody who came by would have food and we tried to set up shelter so anybody who needed a place to sleep had one. We set up a free market there and we were trying to, we were just trying to help out all of the homeless people who were basically getting shit on by the city. I liked what they were doing, saw a lot of the other stuff they've been doing, so I started getting involved with them. If there's a complete economic collapse, you're not going to be able to survive on your own. Humans have always lived collectively because that's how we are, and trying to survive as a human on your own is extremely difficult. It's all about being as anti-capitalist or anti-authoritarian as you possibly can uh, within your means in, in the society that we live in. I think we spend less money than other people who live in a collective situation just because of the nature of us, of the way that we acquire like the things that we get. It, it's difficult to live a completely anti-capitalist lifestyle under a capitalist system, like especially when we own the house, there is money involved. And the world that we live in isn't going to stay this way for much longer, I don't think or hope. Capitalism is inherently all about competition. And if you do better, you reap these rewards, which are, you know, the money and the status and the fame or, or whatever. Whereas mutual aid is acknowledging that your life can only be so good if the people around you's lives are not so good. Basically, all of our existences are tied in together. It only makes sense to help out the people around you. You need them to be doing well for you to do well. If you help them out, they're more likely to be in a position to either help you or someone else out down the line. Capitalism is not about helping people out. Capitalism is about trying to do better than. Capitalism inherently relies on some people being at the bottom. Mutual aid is recognizing that there's more involved than like money or status or goods to get those things which have deeper meaning. We have to work together. Such a dumb idea. <laughs> I don't know what in the fuck you did. <laughs>
if more people lived collectively, they'd be better off because it creates these support networks that otherwise you don't have except through like feeling better through shopping or something.